You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome to another Truth Matters episode where we discuss all things truth from a biblical standpoint. I'm your host, Matt Franklin. According to spaceplace.nasa.gov, the Big Bang Theory is how astronomers explain the way the universe began. It is the idea that the universe began as just a single point, then expanded and stretched to grow as large as it is right now. Many atheists believe in the Big Bang Theory. According to creation.com, the Big Bang, they say, produced the universe all by itself. Then billions of years later, we're told, the first life formed spontaneously in some chemical soup and without any help evolved into all the plants and animals found on earth today, including us. Scientists believe in the Big Bang. Atheists believe in the Big Bang. But can a Bible-believing Christian actually believe in the Big Bang? Can someone who acknowledges and devotes their life to believing in the great Creator rightfully at the same time agree with such a theory? Do you want to know what I think? Here's what I think. For everything manufactured, there must be a manufacturer. For everything designed, there must first be a designer. Everything that exists derived from a pre-existing source. Who told the sun when to rise and when to fall? And how does it circle the earth upon such timely command? Who told the earth to spin at a thousand miles per hour and command gravity to harness all the earth's substances in order to preserve life? Who separated the waters from the dry ground and made the decree they could go no farther? Proverbs 8.29 says, When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. If you enjoy Truth Matters podcast and would like to help this ministry continue spreading the truth of the gospel, consider becoming a patron. This ministry is 100% listener supported. Becoming a patron is safe, easy, and you can give a monthly gift as little as $1, $10, $100, or a one-time donation of any amount. Simply send us an email at truthmatterswithmatt at gmail.com and we'll forward you the information you need to sign up. Thank you in advance. Your help is truly appreciated. There was a time in the Bible when the Israelite people were besieged by the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. And God instructed King Jehoiakim to gather the wise men, the leaders, the people who were well and able to make quick, informative, and wise decisions. God said, here's who I want you to bring. Bring some of the king's seed and of the prince's And children in whom there is no blemish, the well-favored, the skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and catch this, bring those who have understanding of science. Science? You mean to tell me that science was first mentioned in the Bible? Yes. You see, science is not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it's a gift from God. But when people, out of rebellion against God, try to disprove His existence with the very thing He designed for our learning, then it becomes wrong. The Apostle Paul instructed us in 1 Timothy 6 and 19, Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. In other words, when people try to use science against you, when people try to use science to disprove God's truths, avoid them. Don't get in their disputes. Don't give them a time of day. Because you know what you believe, Christian. Don't let anyone persuade you differently. The fact is, science has proven God time and again, and yet atheists seem to think that science disproves God. Did you know that archaeologists discovered the bones of numerous giant skeletons? Did you know that a group of Christian archaeologists discovered what they believe is Noah's Ark? Did you know that they discovered Solomon's Temple? You won't hear about this on the news. You won't see this on Facebook. You can hardly find it on Google. Why? because they're trying to censor the truth. Romans 1 and 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans 1 and 20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Atheist, You can give your philosophical reasoning as to why you don't believe in God's existence. You can make it as intellectually sound as you'd like. But do you know what your problem is? You've become so intellectual 
that you think you can outsmart God. You're arrogant because you're afraid of the thought that there might be someone more powerful than you who created you and who not only created you, but created you to worship Him. You don't want to believe in God because you're not humble enough to worship Him. Instead, you want to be worshipped. You want to be in control. You want to be the designer of your own destiny. You can confess Him as Lord now, or you can confess Him as Lord on Judgment Day, but either way, you're going to confess Him as Lord. In Romans 14 and 11, God so boldly declares, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So yes, I believe in the Creator, and yes, I believe in a big bang, because Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, 14 declares, and God said, let there be light. And when he did, bang, there was such power and energy that came from his mouth. All at once, a ray of billions of stars and lights and planets shot forth at the speed of instancy. And there was such an explosion of power from the mouth of God. The space could not contain his breath and the space lights still to this day flicker from the embers of the heat from his mouth. So yes, I believe in a big bang because I believe in a big God who is more than able to create something out of nothing but a God who's not too big to stoop down to my level and relate to the very struggle I'm facing. And so, to you, atheist, I humbly say, you, sir, you, ma'am, need to be willing to humble yourself enough to believe an infinite, all-powerful God who's big enough to create all things, including you, and who's willing to reach down into your hardened heart and soften you to the point of understanding that, yes, there is not only a God in heaven, but there is a God who, in fact, loves you so much that he caused you to tune in to this simple podcast and listen to this God-fearing preacher boy from Kentucky tell you that God is real, whether you believe in him or not, and that he loves you, whether you understand Understand it or not, and one day you will bow before him whether you want to or not, and you will without excuse confess that he is Lord. Have you ever counted the stars? Have you ever reached a star? Job 38 and 4 says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. You may turn a deaf ear to me, and you may not listen to this little old country boy from Kentucky, but mark my words, you will listen to a God that holds your eternity. And if you don't humble yourself and confess him as Lord and Savior now, one day you're going to confess him as Lord and Judge. I leave you with this. Romans 1. 18-19, through For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. He showed you today. If you're listening, He's telling you today. Believe in me, and you will be saved from an eternal judgment. Believe me not, and hell will be your eternity. Atheist, God loves you, even if you don't believe in Him. Atheist, God cares for you, even if you don't care for him. And atheist, you will meet him one day. Won't you meet him now? Won't you give your heart to him now? Won't you stop suppressing the truth that God has already put in your heart that you keep denying? That you know deep down within your soul there is something more than what meets the eye. There's something more than what you're willing to believe for. There is a God in heaven who loves you. And folks, the most powerful proof that there is a God is the proof that I know I'm a changed man. Because one day, those desires for those things I once did left me. When I gave my heart to God, I no longer wanted to do the things that I used to do. I was no longer bound by the things that I was once bound by. I don't drink like I used to. I don't smoke like I used to. I don't cuss like I used to. I don't go to the same places I used to. I'm a different person. When God saves you from an eternal hell, you become a new creature and all things are become new. You're changed. Your attitude changes. You understand what it's like to really live. I know for a fact that God is real because he's proved himself to me time and again. And once again, as his word says, the heavens declare his works. And in the end, you will be without excuse. No amount of intellectualism will be able to save you then. So humble your heart today, atheist. Humble your heart today, sinner. Put your trust in a God that's more powerful than you are and that loves you so much more than you could ever understand. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll share it with others so that we can get the truth out. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this episode of Truth Matters Podcast, be sure to share it with your family and friends and follow me on social media to help spread the truth. Thanks for tuning in. God bless.